up for Meredith. Um, as you guys can probably tell, my skin color is the perfect shade of mysterious. <laughs> and because of that, a lot of people like to ask me, like, what are you? Where are you from? And look, I don't mind when people ask me where I'm from. Because I like to ask them back, where do you think I'm from? <laughs> and then it gets better. I create a list of all the countries people say that I'm from. It's my own cheaper version of doing 23 and Me. Yeah. I'm an actor, you know, I gotta have a budget, so. Um, but let's be real, it's 2020, we live in woker times. Like, white people, they don't straight up ask, like, what are you anymore, right? Like, they've learned that's a no-no. That doesn't stop them from wanting to solve my ethnicity mystery. So instead of asking the question, what are you, they just, like, tell me their answer and their reasoning. Like, like one time, this white chick, she was like, hey, you must be Indian because of that red dot between your eyebrows. And I was like, bitch, this is a pimple. <laughs> but the bitch was right, I am Indian. <laughs> so she was smart. Uh, but specifically though, I'm half Indian, half Pakistani. And usually when I tell people that, some of you just did that, they're like, oh, <laughs> that's an interesting combination. How'd that happen? And then I'm forced to give a sex talk to a fully grown adult human. It's a bit awkward. Um, but yes, I know that my ethnic breakdown, it's a bit of a rarity, um, especially in the South Asian community, like Indian and Pakistani, they're supposed to be like rivals. Um, but more importantly, Indians and Pakistanis aren't allowed to procreate with one another because the British, they didn't allow that after they colonized the subcontinent. That is a joke, everybody. <laughs> I know, it sounds like a real thing because the British are that crazy, right? I know, it's, it's very fun to do that joke because some people are like, oh my God, what the fuck? <laughs> the British actually did that? I've actually determined this thing about Britain, okay? I've determined that Britain is history's original fuckboy. <laughs> because they never wanted to colonize like one country and just like stay with that one country for the rest of history. Like Britain had bitches on every continent. You know what I'm saying? Like, do, do you guys know like how many countries Britain has colonized? Like, just shout out some numbers. 47? 82. 82? 101, okay, all right, we're getting, all right, let me just drop a little history lesson on you guys, all right? There are only 22 countries in the world that Britain hasn't invaded. That is 171 countries that have been infiltrated by bad teeth and drama-free television. <laughs> it made me think, though, it made me think that the other 22 countries, I feel like if they could talk, I feel like they'd say something like, is there something wrong with me? Like, am I not attractive enough for you to drain my resources? Like, do you not want to give me a crippling economy and decades of politically motivated ethnic violence? Like, what's the deal? Is it my hair? <clears throat> Basically, Britain's mentality on the world, it's, hmm, what part of the globe haven't we fucked yet? Ah, our own continent. And that's how we have Brexit. <laughs> they did it to themselves. Uh, Fuckboys are their own worst enemy. Moral of the story. Um, so my mom, she's originally from Pakistan. That's my half Pakistani side. And she's Christian. She's very religious. Um, and I'm gay. So when I came out to my mom, I was really nervous because she's very Christian. She's very religious. Worst case scenario, I thought, oh shit, she might send me to conversion therapy camp. Now, for those of you that don't know what that is, it's like a really scary program where they try to make you straight. So I didn't know how it worked, though, so I Googled it. And essentially what they do is they round a bunch of girls who are attracted to other girls, and they put them in a camp for a few weeks. So then I was like, oh shit. <laughs> oh 
She might send me to conversion therapy camp. I'm gonna go full on Britain in this place. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, no, when I when I did come out to my mom, she said, "Retha, I love you. I'll always be praying for you." And I was like, oh, "Thanks, mom." I shot a curiosity. What exactly are you praying for? And she was like, "That one day you'll find a godly man." Look, I know it's not the ideal response you want to hear, right? But I'm not too worried because we all know how far thoughts and prayers get us in this country. <laughs> Try proposing some real legislation, mom, and then I'll start to freak out. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys have been wonderful. Enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you so much.